Welcome to the 1001 service at the Union Church of South Foxborough. I'm over here. I always feel bad due to the sun angle for those of you who are here in person. So I'm trying to be over a little bit more to give you a better sun angle if you need to turn your chairs so the sun isn't in your eyes quite as much. But welcome to our service this morning. Those of you in New Brunswick or Lancaster or Randolph, all the way to Fort Myers watching on our live stream, welcome. We are one church wherever we are, one church through God's Son, Jesus Christ. And I'll begin our service with a word of prayer. To those of you who are here, by the way, I want to mention, um, if you begin to be lightheaded, if you need any, if there's any trouble due to the heat and humidity, the door on the end of the building is unlocked. The fellowship hall is 72 degrees with our air conditioning we can't yet enjoy, but it is cool in there. There are chairs in there. We have water. We have Gatorade. So please, if anyone is in distress, you can signal that you need help or help yourself. Either way, we want everyone safe and comfortable. Could we pray together? Father, thank you for another beautiful day that we may worship you, that we may gather in your house or outside your house. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are present by your Holy Spirit. May your name be exalted in this service wherever we are. Bless it to us. Together we pray in the name of your Son. Amen. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, sing, O worth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arm, he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation, Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with Hosanna song. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. It's a blessing having faith here for the summer. Thank you so much for that. A lot of people comment as they go out how wonderful her voice is and how wonderful it is to have her. So we want you to know we're grateful for your ministry to us. I have a couple updates on prayer requests. Our faithful Deacon Fran is here today. We've been praying for her husband, Fred, who had 
has had surgery following a hip fracture and um, help yourself to a chair and come on in, Aaron. Fred is doing well. He's at Spalding Rehab in Charlestown and doing well. He had a good day yesterday, so we're continuing to pray for healing and for positivity and encouragement in his spirit and for Fran as she goes back and forth from Boston to care for him. Um, also, friends of Fran, actually, we have a second prayer request. Remember baby Alexander, who we prayed for for several months, a, a few months ago? Um, baby Alexander is on the prayer list. He's having a procedure this week and on Thursday, I believe, and the family would appreciate prayer. He's been doing well all along. This is a not yet one-year-old baby but he's been doing well, but the family would appreciate prayer this week for the procedure that he's having. We've been praying for a little boy, a relative of Kevin Gorney, named Cody. Cody is doing very well. I got, Kevin sent me a picture of him this morning. He's continuing to do well in his battle with leukemia and with Gullion Barr syndrome, but, um, and he has a wonderful spirit, so we can continue to pray for him as well. I think those are the prayer updates that we have. The prayer list, if you're on our church list of the newsletter, the prayer list will be going out every other week as part of that. We appreciate prayer for these during the week individually as well. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in an uproar, if you know any nation like that, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Father, thank you that we may come into your presence in this beautiful outdoor setting. Jesus taught the disciples outdoors on many occasions. So we thank you that we may share in the outdoor experience of worship. And we do worship you today as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For you are holy. You are all-powerful, all-wise. You are full of compassion and graciousness. Lord, so many things we do not understand, we cannot comprehend. Even things that we have prayed for and people we have prayed for, we cannot understand but we trust in your magnificent and majestic character and in your purposes, which are always for good in human life. Thank you for your great love extended to our world through your Son, Jesus Christ, who did not leave us in our fallen, sinful condition, but came into the world, lived without sin, and gave his life on the cross, that all who look to him by faith and give their heart to him, might be redeemed, forgiven, given a new life. So thank you for these things you have done for us. And Father, this morning we bring before you a few of many prayer requests on our hearts. We pray for anyone present here with an unspoken prayer request, a private burden or concern for a loved one or for self, or for the future, or for decisions. Father, thank you that you are at work in each of our lives, and I bring before each person here and the challenges they face and the concerns that they carry, some heartbreaking. And I pray that you would interact and intersect with human life for your best and for the best of people who are here and, and everywhere. Father, be with some of our families who are experiencing difficulty and 
unspoken situations for, with family members they are concerned for, bless, guide, and help in each situation. Father, we bring Fred Kleindienst before you. We thank you that he's doing well. Thank you that he walked. Continue to strengthen his muscles and give him an undefeatable spirit as he goes through his rehab. Use it for the strength and rebuilding of his body and his mobility. Father, continue to be with baby Alexander. This child is precious to an extended family, his parents, his grandparents, and precious in your sight. Bless this child, we pray, with this procedure this week for his health, his well-being, that he might be strong and healthy throughout a, a normal and lengthy lifespan. We pray the same for Cody as he continues to undergo treatment. His family, we pray with their uncertainty and their concern, but continue to make treatment effective for this boy and his well-being. Bless others in our church family who are in need of your touch. Continue to minister to Craig Pierce as he recovers from surgery. For our missionary, Joanne Shelton, as she undergoes treatment for cancer, bless it, make it effective for her well-being. And Father, we pray for our great nation, for we are a people divided. Hidden things are coming to the surface. Many are bitter, many are struggling. Father, we need a spiritual renewal more than any sing single thing in this nation. Return us to the sight of who you are and humility before you. Be with those who are active as first responders, protecting us, caring for us. Be with our troops around the world, grant them protection and peace. And Father, we worship you together this morning as Jesus taught his disciples, whose Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. of things to announce and share with you this morning. One is Zoom. we will be on Zoom on Wednesday night. If you are interested, if you have not joined in, you are welcome to. We'll be finishing the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, the shortest of the books of the chapters in Daniel. That is on Zoom at 7 p.m. If you, you should have the link in the newsletter if you need it, please let us know. If you haven't received the newsletter, but you would like to, please call the church office and we'll make sure your email is added to the list. A reminder, if the weather is not good, if it rains on a given week, we can take the heat, right? But if it rains, we can't handle that, just kidding. But if it rains due to our equipment and so on, we will be indoors on live stream only through Facebook Live or through our church website. Lastly, if you have not been baptized as a believer, but you've received Christ as your Savior and you would like to be baptized, we do that in the summer here because we do it outdoors, so please see me. If you would like to become an official member of Union Church, we have a, we have a little two-part class that goes with that. Um, with both of those actually. So if you'd like to become a member and you're not a member and some people have been waiting to join, please see me. We'd love to have you. Um, so please see me about that. If you're following along and would like to read the scripture 
or refer to it during the sermon today. We're going to be in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. If you have it on your phone or you have an, an, an actual Bible, you're welcome to turn to John chapter 12. We're going to read this morning verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> She was 17 years old, a teenager working in a photography shop, when he came in for a portrait. A rapidly rising politician in his country. He was 40 years of age, but he asked her on a date. She accepted. After seeing him a while, she began dreaming that one day perhaps she could be First Lady of Germany. But he was cultivating an image as a man dedicated 24-7 to the German people and to the building of an empire, the restoration of the glory of Germany following the defeat of World War I. So while she moved in and lived with him, he did not marry her, nor was she allowed to be in photos with him at public events, nor was she allowed to... Um, be with him at public events. She could be present but not near him. When the war of conquest he began was going well, he sent her to live in his villa in the mountains where she would be safe and there she entertained her friends and her family and her cousins would come and spend time with her. But he was back at headquarters running the war effort and so she was often lonely, missing her now common-law husband. He kept her at a distance. For 12 years she lived in this way. So unhappy twice she attempted to take her own life, only allowed to be with him in private. But when the war turned bad, she vowed to die with him, and she went with him to the underground bunker, you know of it, in Berlin, Germany. And there, finally, he married her. They had a wedding dinner in an underground bunker several stories below the sound of the bombs falling above, which were heard. It was not a romantic wedding or dinner following with their guests. One day after marrying him, she watched as her husband poisoned their dogs, then handed her a capsule of cyanide, and she died with him. Eva Braun... Mrs. Adolf Hitler was only 33 years old. But that's what happens when you hang out with evil. That's what happens when you hang out with the wrong person, the wrong country, the wrong people. The whole nation ended up devastated. President Truman went to Yalta in Poland and traveled back across Germany in the train, and I've mentioned this before, as he looked out his window, he said later, he saw not one building in all of Europe that was not damaged due to the war, and he saw not one person within sight of the train tracks as he looked out his window who was well-dressed. Everyone was devastated by one man who was evil who ascended to power. But today we're going to think about something much better, the polar opposite. What was it like to hang out with Jesus? And what are the results if we spend time with Jesus? We've been spending time with him in the gospel according to John. We've been listening to his teaching. We've seen him interact with people. We've seen the effect he had in their lives. And the last several weeks we built up to, and last week kind of anticlimactically saw the resurrection of Lazarus, his good friend, who had been dead four days. But Jesus, with the voice that in Genesis 1 created the universe, spoke, and Lazarus returned to life. Jesus had raised him to life, and a few days later found him still in Bethany, the little village Here's Jerusalem, here's the Mount of Olives, rising several hundred feet above the city of Jerusalem. 
Bethany is over here on the other side of the Mount of Olives. Jesus was lingering there, and Jesus came to lunch, and a bunch of people hung out with Jesus. Let's read what happened. John chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Six days before Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial, meaning the time, the approaching time of his burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jewish people found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. Now it's six days before the Jewish Passover, the great feast of the first century Jewish people, and Mary and Martha are very grateful. They've received their brother Lazarus back from the dead, so they want to honor Jesus with a meal, and you understand why they would want to do that, have Jesus as their guest. And Lazarus, who Jesus had raised to life only a few days before, a few days before this man had been lying in the tomb, and I don't mean to be explicit, but his body deteriorating by the fourth day, yet Jesus spoke and raised him to life. Now he's at the luncheon. Now he's there eating and conversing with the other guests. And this miracle has reached Jerusalem, and crowds of people have come. And whether it, the meal was in a courtyard, outdoors, a patio, or whether it was indoors, the point is a crowd was there looking in and seeing Lazarus. There he is. There he is. You know, I was at his funeral. I saw him dead. I saw them put him in the tomb. And there he is. I think he's eating a chicken salad sandwich on a Hawaiian king roll, if I'm not mistaken. Verse 8 says, they were going over to Jesus because of the miracle. Stay with Jesus. What are the effects of hanging out with Jesus? Stay with Jesus and we receive our life. We receive our life. Hitler scammed the German people, promised them all kinds of wonderful things, a Reich, an empire that would stand a thousand years. They followed the wrong guy, the wrong person. They ended up with a million people dead and a, a, a ruined country. President Truman said not one building without damage or destroyed. Lazarus hung out with Jesus. He walked out of the tomb alive. He received his life. He went from a grave to a luncheon from lying wrapped and deteriorating to eating that chicken salad sandwich on a Hawaiian king roll. That's what you're going to eat for lunch because I keep mentioning it. Sounds good right about now, doesn't it? Lazarus stayed with Jesus. Mary and Martha stayed with Jesus. They were followers of Jesus all through his ministry, and they got their brother back. They had joy and peace handed to them. They received peace from having been with Jesus. And typical of their very distinct personalities revealed in the gospel accounts, Martha is hurrying to serve people. She's the sister that can't stand still. And Mary, the more contemplative 
outwardly spiritual one comes with a perfume and honors Jesus and prepares his body, anoints his body for his soon coming death on the cross, an extravagant display of affection on the part of Mary, and she hears Jesus speak up in her defense when others are critical of this. What a day to remember. What an experience that can never be taken away. Jesus was here at our patio. Jesus was our guest. Jesus defended me. Jesus gave me back my brother. When we hang out with the right people, when we stay with Jesus and hang out with him, we get life. Jesus raised a widow's son to life in the village of Nain. We don't, archaeologists don't yet know where that is. But the miracle was in Luke 7, 11 through 17, Jesus raised to life the only son of a widow. He raised to life Jairus' daughter. In Matthew 9, verses 18 through 26, he raised Lazarus here in John chapter 11. And six, day, eight days, pardon me, later, he would return to life himself at his glorious resurrection. When Jesus died on the cross, Matthew reports to us a very mysterious occurrence that many graves of known people around Jerusalem broke open at the moment Jesus died on the cross and they emerged alive again, symbolizing and representing an actual occurrence, but representing that Jesus' death gives life. Hang out with Jesus and you receive your life Peter, the disciple, later raised a woman named Tabitha back to life in the name of Jesus in Acts chapter 9, 36 through 42. Paul raised Eutychus to life in Jesus' name in Acts 20, verses 7 through 12. Stay with Jesus, follow him, and we'll have life, beginning in this world, a spiritual life, a regeneration, that we've never had before. Go with the wrong person, your country will be destroyed. Hang out with Jesus and you will receive life. You'll receive help in this life and eternal life to come. Paul was imprisoned, he was shipwrecked, he was beaten, he was stoned, he had all kinds of things happen to him in persecutions, but he persevered through all those experiences. He stayed with Jesus. And in Philippians 4, verse 11, he wrote words that we can aspire to, and I'm still trying to aspire to these words. He said, and he's thinking of all he went through, he says, I have learned to be content in all circumstances. A real relationship with Christ gives contentedness. When we're well or when we're ill, when we're strong or when we're weak, when we're wealthy or when we're poor, whatever our options or no options, a relationship with Christ is what we need more than anything else. Paul stayed with Jesus. He received serenity and peace and comfort and courage. He received a never defeated spirit. So we get life in the form of contentment and peace in all circumstances and confidence that God is at work in our life. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. New motives, a cleaned up act, a changed life, hope for an eternal future. Some of us can recall a change like that. Others of us were brought up in the faith and that's wonderful. Neither one is better or worse than the other. I remember distinctly my days, my days of making fun of people who believe when I was in high school and having drinking issues and all sorts of things, and I prayed a one-sentence prayer as I've shared, and when I stood up, everything was different. We can never forget where God has brought us from and what he's rescued us from. Stay with Jesus. Hang out with Jesus. Pick hanging out with Jesus. Make him the honored guest in our home and in our life and have a relationship with him and everything is better. We will have life brought back from the dead. 
like Lazarus, alive again, living freely again, having hope again. And then, and maybe this is a bit repetitive, but we also notice in this passage that to be with Jesus, to hang out with Jesus, we have a lot to celebrate. We will have a lot to celebrate. Following Christ give us much, gives us much to celebrate. It means we're inwardly changed from what we were or what we would be, regenerated, pure, pure motives where our motives didn't used to be because God is holy. If we truly know him and we're truly regenerated, we'll have a, a hunger to learn the word of God and learn what God speaks to us and into our life and we'll grow in our desire to know it and understand it. We won't be lacking in desire for scripture. It won't be ho-hum. We'll have a love in our heart. Does our country not need love and forgiveness? We'll have love in our heart for ourselves and for other people. We'll care for people. We'll be willing to go the extra mile. We'll be willing to give of ourselves rather than bitterness and hatred and division. We'll have love and joy and peace. We'll won't, it's not just about solemnly following a certain set of rules, but it's about joy and happiness and celebrating every day what Christ has done for us. Feel free to move if you're in the sun and you're hot. Certainly. A pastor got the idea of having people greet one another during a service. This is pre-COVID, obviously. A fellow pastor said to him, I always have everybody take a moment to greet each other. It's a good way for a church to learn to be friendly. So this pastor said, I'm going to try that in my church. And on a certain Sunday, he announced every week from now on in the worship service, we'll take a moment to greet one another. One man sitting in a pew liked the idea, turned and smiled at an older woman sitting behind him. She scowled back and s whispered to him, don't smile at me, that friendliness stuff doesn't start until next week. If we know Christ, we'll have joy, we'll have love, we'll care for one another, we'll do things not just for self, but for our significant other, or for our family, or for our church family, or for people we meet. Mary is an example here. She's full of joy. She brings a container of perfume worth in today's currency somewhere between fifty and sixty thousand dollars. And she pours it on the feet of Jesus at this luncheon. And she evidently had long hair because she takes her hair and she wipes the feet of Jesus. And we're told the scent of the perfume, the nard, goes through all the house. It's a affectionate gesture. It's a worship gesture. She is worshiping Jesus. It's also a shocking gesture. Those with impure motives might think she's making some sort of romantic statement to Jesus. She wasn't. She was worshiping him. And Judas criticizes her for wasting money, cloaking it in his concern for the poor, forgetting it wasn't his money, it was her money. She had a right to do as she wished with her money. It wasn't the group's money. She could have saved this money and helped out poor people with it, but his motive is about himself, and Jesus speaks up in her defense. Mary was anointing Jesus for his burial. She was worshiping him. She was celebrating out of joy and gratitude what he had done in her life his death, and celebrating that he was the Savior, the Rescuer. If we have a, an issue or we have a need in our life, he is the Rescuer. Hers was an act of worship. She's celebrating this. The Christian faith isn't about the rules or following certain habits or a lifeless rote. It's a celebration. We have joy. We have contentment. We have a relationship with God through his Son. We're a new person with a new orientation in life, and we can be thankful and joyous in our relationship with him. Stay with Jesus. Hang out with Jesus. Hang out with an evil person, and you'll end up with destruction in your life. Hang out with Jesus, and you'll receive eternal life, and you'll receive contentment and joy and encouragement for this life. You can just hear people at the luncheon 
Lazarus, would you mind passing the bowl of Cape Cod chips? There was Lazarus who received his life. And we have that promise of life forever. And that gives us joy. Whatever we're going through, and there's a lot of pain in the lives of the church family and in the lives of people, whatever we're going through, we know it will turn out well when we're in the kingdom of heaven. And lastly, hang out with Jesus, approach Jesus, go to Jesus, and you will be extravagantly welcomed. Verse 9 says, Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there, and they came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Large crowds had begun to accumulate in the three years of Jesus' ministry. They grew and grew and grew. And the miracle of the resurrection of Lazarus had gone, the word of it had gone down into the city of Jerusalem. So people came up over the Mount of Olives, not only to see Jesus, the miracle doer, whose word is the word that created all things, but to see Lazarus, the man who they had see, many had seen dead. Do we think for one moment that Jesus saw those people coming or had those people approach? And he said to the disciples, get those people away from me. I'm tired. I'm hassled. I'm stressed. Keep the crowd back. I don't want to deal with them. That's not what Jesus said. Quite to the contrary, it's Jesus who said, let the little children come to me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And it's Jesus who said, there is a rejoicing among the angels in heaven when one sinner repents and turns to God and turns to Christ. One sinner, the angels. The moment we came to Christ, thousands of angels rejoiced, and we were welcomed ahead of time to the kingdom of he heaven. We are welcomed. We are rejoiced over. P the, from heaven they look and say, look at that, another one. We got him. We got her. They're a citizen now of the kingdom of heaven. You ever have people recite your failings? I have. Semi-regularly. Remember when you did this? You shouldn't have done that. And we recite it to ourselves, don't we? If I could go back and be young again, I would have done this, or I would have done this differently, or I wouldn't have done that. We can remember times, maybe recent, maybe distant, when we said things or did things in the moment of emotion or anger that we wish later we had never done. But when we come to faith in Christ, we surrender our heart to him. 1 John 1.8 says, The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. And that's our favorite Greek word there, pass, all, every one of, every sin, past, present, future, forgiven, wiped away before God, clean slate, all, every one of, forgiven from the past, we can forgive ourselves. When people remind us of the, our past failings, we can remind ourselves we're forgiven, and one day we're welcomed, we will be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven forever. Jesus told the story of a king who gave a banquet for his son, and he sent out invitations to all the important people. And all the important people, every single one, was busy that day. I have business. I have to go take care of a sick relative. I have to go do this or that. So the king said to his servants, you go out back into the streets. Whoever you meet, the poor, the blind, the naked, invite them to the banquet to my son. And all those people came. Random people who the servants of the king invited. That's us. That's us if we're outside Judaism, if we aren't his original Jewish people. We're those random people invited, brought in, welcomed into the presence of the kingdom of heaven. He invites us. He welcomes us. He wants every one of us. Terry. Terry was a guy in his 20s who was an atheist. 
He viewed people of faith like I once did as weaklings who needed a crutch to get through life so they had an imaginary God they could talk to and who would help them. One day, Terry the atheist happened to be flipping channels on his television and he came across a faith-based channel and there was a, a documentary, a reenactment of the life of Jesus and he began watching it. And he found himself drawn into this reenactment, this depiction of the life of Jesus. And all of a sudden, Terry the atheist realized he was crying as he watched this, and he had no idea why. Part two was the next day he waited and watched the clock and had his television ready, and he watched the second half the next day, and he did what I once did. He fell on his knees, and he said his prayer was this, he said, Lord Jesus, I apologize. I didn't realize that you were real. Forgive me and change my life. He says, I stood up a different man, a changed person. I felt clean. I felt joy. I felt peace. He abruptly kicked his three-pack-a-day cigarette habit. He was an atheist but he was welcome. Welcome into the family circle of the kingdom of God, rejoiced over by unseen angels in heaven who will welcome again when he enters heaven at the end of life. Maybe in the past, someone watching was a neo-Nazi, or maybe we're a racist, I once was. Maybe an addict, I once was. Maybe in a fit of anger, we hit our significant other. We're not very proud of that. Whatever our past has in it, or our present has in it, God the Holy Spirit can change our heart and our life and lead us to purity and fill our heart with love and give us that joy and contentment that Mary and Martha had and other people had as they were welcomed to the luncheon of the King, Jesus. Choose wisely who you hang out with. Choose wisely who you have influence you. One man, one man misled a nation and destroyed the nations of a continent, Europe. But the polar opposite, the exact opposite, the man of goodness, the man of holiness, the man who is perfect, he brings life. God himself in human form, as a man, can give us the gift of life. Ask Lazarus. Ask Mary and Martha who received their brother back. Ask the people who came up from Jerusalem and looked in at the patio and said, that is him, that is Lazarus. He's eating a chicken salad sandwich on a Hawaiian king roll. You want it now, right? Jesus gives life. Hang out with him. Hang out with him. Make him the welcome guest in your home. Make him the Lord of your heart and your life and all that we do. He will give us a relationship and he will give us reason to celebrate and he will give us joy, a new heart and a changed life for the better, for contentment, for peace, for the things nothing in this world can ever fill us with. Could we pray together? Heavenly Father, my, my personal pride doesn't like to talk about it but I was a messed up kid and I laughed at people who talked about you. They made me so uncomfortable. But I thank you for that day when I prayed a sentence prayer and you changed my heart and my life and I discovered you aren't a myth. You aren't an imaginary God. You are real and you change and make everything better. And even in the problems we have in this life, you can make everything better. Father, thank you that 
through Christ. We receive spiritual life. We receive a life back on this earth in the form of joy and peace, serenity and contentment. If we turn our life over and admit we are powerless, you will make a difference. Father, I pray for each person here that they would know that peace and have that joy and contentment in you. Be real to each of us as you ended up real to me every day since. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for bringing Lazarus back to life so we may know one day it can be our turn and we can have life eternal in your kingdom. In the name of your Son, Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he is that is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, bold less to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Thank you, Faith. Thank you for watching and joining us by live stream this morning. Thank you to everyone who's actually here. I just checked, it's 84 degrees and it's going up, but thank you for being here this morning. Jesus changes lives still. Hang out with him. Trust in him. And whatever we go through, it will get better. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be yours in abundance. Amen.